This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. Welcome to our special edition of KTSM 9 News at 6. Our Small Town Spotlight series continues and we are in East El Paso at Rad Retrocade. It's an arcade bar and boy, do they have some great food. Today we're showcasing what this side of town has to offer. And as usual, we have such a great show for you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Natasha Paloma. And I'm Andy Morgan. Of course, every Wednesday throughout the summer, we've been live on location from a special place here in our community. And today we're in East El Paso at Rad Retrocade, just having an absolute blast. Certainly a lot to do here, kind of almost like a precursor, I'm saying, to like football season with the yeah. food that I see in front of us. I know we're going to dive into it here in just a second, but yeah, really excited to be in East El Paso today. Yeah, and as you can see behind us, such a lively place. Mm -hmm. We have some pinball machines right next to us, and what I love is there are some kids playing with the pinball machines, playing things like Terminator, sure. like Ninja Turtles, I'm looking games over there, that we, play. that we played mm -hmm. when we were little, so it's great to see all these games passed down to the next generation. Absolutely. I'm, I'm about to challenge some people here in skee-ball. I said yeah, that, you at, said uh, that at that's five your thing. I absolutely yeah. love ski ball. Let's talk a little bit more about Rad Retrocade because it's been a staple in our community for, for quite a while. They, have, of course, have that location in West El Paso, uh, another one here in East El Paso. Um, I know there's one in Las Cruces, and then we just heard they're actually opening up a location in Santa Fe, which is really, really cool. Yeah, that's right, and we have this story to share with you of all that it has. Take a look. My husband was a collector. He loved the whole 80s vibe. He grew up in the 80s. We started having uh, parties at our house and I was collecting arcade games for many years. He started collecting arcade games and fixing them himself. We used to have get-togethers during fall break and spring break for the teachers to come over. Our friends had a wonderful time being there and they said, you guys should turn this into a bar. And I told my husband, you know what, I think we can do this. I, I, I can go ahead and launch um, an arcade bar, if that's what you want to call it. And we really wanted people, when they walked in, to get taken back in time. Just the whole 80s and 90s vibe is, is very... Um, it was very, it was a lot of fun to us. Well, to me, these games are timeless. They're getting harder to find. Um, I think the older they get, the cooler they get. Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, all these games are over 30 years old now. And I think the older the games get, the more nostalgic they become. And people just, they're just amazed to see games that they played when they were, when they were little kids. And I think that really draws people into their childhood. We really love this location because it's so close to Fort Bliss and with so much growth happening in El Paso and with the local community being so supportive, we took the chance and we went ahead and launched this location. There's enough for everyone and if one local location can give exposure to other local businesses, why not? That's what it's all about, helping each other out. Very cool. And if you watched ever uh, any of our small town spotlight series, you know there's going to be a lot of food. And joining us is Nicole. I love uh, all the retro vibes. So you have a garbage pail kids, yes. I guess, bucket, right? And what's in here? Yes. So we have uh, tostadas layered with oh, queso, wow. um, carne asada, pico de gallo, avocado sauce, sour cream, and then we top it with some uh, pico de gallo up here. Look how easy that was too in terms of like efficiency. Talk yeah, about yeah. efficiency right there. Yeah. It's beautiful presentation. What yeah. else do we have here? We have our jumbo um, bone in buffalo wings and then our signature pepperoni pizza. All right. We're all set to go for Thursday night football tomorrow, I'd say. What do you, I know, what do you think? Yeah, with the football season coming, you all showcase sports, right? We yes. see all these TVs. So there's a lot you can do here. Yeah, we show all the UFC fights, all the football games, so all right. Thank you, Nicole, yeah, for joining course, us. Mm -hmm. And I know our very own Monica Cortez is standing by with the owners. Uh, Monica, hey there. Hey guys, yes, I have the unique honor to be standing next to the owners. And guys, we've been doing the Small Town Spotlight series, right? We went to Fabens, we went to Clint. Well, they came together and, and you guys built this incredible thing. I can't believe it. I feel like this is a full circle for us. It is. Thank you so much for being here. 
And so, okay, so we have Mariana and Alex Macias. And, and guys, you were telling me about how um, this all really came together with your childhood. Uh, everything. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yes, so I'm from Fabens. My husband's from Clint. Um, I grew up in the 80s, 90s era. He grew up in the 70s, 80s era. Uh, he was an avid collector, and we used to have get togethers uh, back when he was a teacher with our friends and family. We converted our garage into an arcade room, wow. and our friends and family started telling us you should really. Uh, start a business you have something going on and that's what kind of like launched the whole idea Wow that's incredible and your guys unique concepts you've kind of sprinkled it all over your business talk a little bit about that we just things that were cool to us when we were kids um, the pictures on the wall everything that we picked were things that we grew up with that people could connect to when they see them something they can kind of draw them in that's incredible. And Mari, so tell me, I feel like you're saying that, um, you know, so first of all, let me just say, for those of you who know this place, Rubik's is what it's used to be called, but now you have this really cool name, Rad. Talk about it. Yes, we changed the name to Rad Retrocade. We wanted all, all of it to be just one. Uh, we have other businesses in Las Cruces. We have a Rad Retrocade there in downtown Las Cruces. Uh, the community there has been very supportive. Our first location was on the west side near UTIP, and now we have this one on the east side. And really quickly, Mari, you were telling me that you guys just got featured on ESPN. Yes, it was such an honor. The UTIP football team came in, and they did a photo shoot and a video shoot. Um, promoting their retro our, uh, their, their retro uniforms yes. and we came out on ESPN uh, in the background. That is incredible. <laughs> this is like a mom pop shop. Well, not really. It's a huge business. I love it. Um, but guys, come out and support it. There is so much from our childhood that you will see here. Pac-Man, you just saw Scooby-Doo. You're going to see so many things. Any last words real quickly? Um, this is a place for everyone. It's a place for kids, grown-ups, to bring in their inner childhood, and all ages. You come out and have some fun. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Guys, you definitely want to check this out. Back to you, Andy and Natasia. Monica, thank you very much. You forgot the cruising world. Oh, yeah. Remember that? That was yeah. another one of my favorites. They even so. have Street Fighter, very similar yeah, to Mortal Kombat. I remember Kombat. that, too. Uh -huh. Still play that, though, on I the saw Xbox. <laughs> Halo really yeah. bringing back it some, really some memories here. It really does bring back those memories. And I know that meteorologist Robert Bettis, he is out. Uh, and we're, I, I know he's been all over the place. He really has. And I think he's Where got a special, yeah. special guest with him. So we always got to check in, and, and we're kind of curious. What is Robert up to now? Well, Andy and Natasha, I'm out here on the patio because they have an absolutely wonderful wonderful patio and as you can see a beautiful vehicle behind me it is the mystery machine I am a kid of the 80s I do like it retro of course it's a little hot out here on the patio right now you have to go how about an ice cold Shirley Temple are you kidding me right now sir <laughs> yeah. ha. hey ho Let's it's go. Bobby Bone, everybody. <laughs> Bobby, good to see you. How you doing, sir? I think I need a new ride. I'm gonna tell you though. It yeah. looks, it's worn. It's got a flat tire. Yeah, the paint's Let me chipping show you a little a, bit. Let me show you a better vehicle. Okay. Of course, it's been hot, and it's going to I stay understand. hot. And we're, we're actually going to get hotter tomorrow. Right. High right. temperature will be going up to about 105, 105 degrees okay. as we continue the record heat. But we get a cold front on Tuesday. Oh, nice. Let me tell you what. These small town spotlights would not happen without the Charlie Clark Automotive Group, and of course they. Say Send out the famous Bobby Bone every single. Day. Woo! That, that's a little bit better there than there the, uh, than mystery, the mystery, mystery machine. machine. This was a 2023 Nissan Pathfinder okay. Rock Creek. Bobby, I'm I'm kind of out of time. We're gonna do the forecast coming up, and I know you're not a very good dancer, so I don't want to put you on the spot, okay. but I am challenging you officially to a dance off. Is that gonna be a problem? No, not at all. Andy, Natasha, problem? Definitely looking forward to that. I feel like this is like the world's yeah. biggest dance dance revolution it's floor back here. I thought it was. Yeah, it's not. It's perfect but for it, this. it basically looks like it. Yeah. Some so sort of thing like I'm, that. I'm eager to see that. Yeah. I want to see who wins. And that's definitely <laughs> uh, coming up. We have a lot more to get to here on this edition of Small Town Spotlights. Yeah, let's go ahead and send it over to Stephanie Shield. She has today's news of the day for us. Hey, Stephanie. 
Hey Andy, Natasha, to your top stories for the day. The lawyer of the mother whose three-year-old son drowned in a Northeast El Paso water park in May has now responded after she was recently arrested. As we've reported, Jessica Weaver was charged with injury of a child, which is a first-degree felony. Houston-based attorney Ryan McLeod, who is currently representing Jessica Weaver, responded following her arrest, saying the charge against Weaver in El Paso District Attorney Bill Hicks's press conference were quote clearly an act of vindictive retaliation against Miss Weaver and another example of the city refusing to accept responsibility for Anthony's death end quote. A review hearing is set for Monday September 18th for Weaver in El Paso. A new testimony today in Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. We heard from Paxton's former top employee, the first person to report him to the FBI for complaints of bribery and abuse of office. Prosecutors examined Jeff Mateer, who was Paxton's right-hand man as the first assistant attorney general. He said he witnessed Paxton use his power to grant legal favors to the Austin real estate investor and Paxton campaign donor at the center of Paxton's bribery charges. Other witnesses expected to take the stand include other whistleblowers who sued Paxton for wrongful termination and the woman who, with whom Paxton allegedly had an affair. Well, a federal judge has now ordered Texas to move a large floating barrier to the bank of the Rio Grande by September 15th. The barriers were put in place by Governor Greg Abbott as a tactic to try stopping migrants from crossing the southern border. Texas has also installed razor wire and steel fencing along the border, and the state has already said it will appeal that decision. Well, that was a look at your top stories for the day. Let's go ahead and send things back over to Andy and Natasha, who are live in East El Paso for our Small Town Spotlight. Hey, guys. Hey, Stephanie. So, yeah, if you're just joining us, as Stephanie mentioned, we're here for our Small Town Spotlight Series. We're in East El Paso at Rad Retrocade, an arcade, restaurant, bar, great food. We have some nachos, some wings, pizza. Wait, it doesn't get any better than this, right? I'm telling you, <laughs> this is about as good as it gets. And we yeah. talked about how it seems like food is always a big thing when it does come to Small Town Spotlight. Sometimes you just got to keep it simple, and simple sometimes is just absolutely fantastic. You yeah. have the nachos, the wings, the pizza, every football fan's dream. Right, they always take care of us, and we're here, as we mentioned, in East El Paso, right along Montana. So what yeah. better time than to talk about the Montana Expansion Project? It's under phase one of three phases right now. Yeah, and we actually got to talk to TxDOT about this and kind of see how this project has progressed and kind of moves forward. Take a look. This completely transforms uh, Montana into an expressway, so people will uh, be able to drive straight through Montana without stopping at any intersections and will have the option uh, to take those frontage roads if they need to stop or if there is an incident or a crash on the main lanes. So along with this project on the north side, we have a shared use path that has already been constructed. So uh, people on their bikes or walking um, can enjoy the facility. So the, the technology that's encompassed with e, the Montana project, um, of course, includes uh, the latest in ADA and in pedestrian crossings to make those accessible um, for not only people that are walking or on bikes, but also people that are uh, on wheelchairs. sections of the project where lanes will be depressed again fully transforming the way um, that uh, Montana looks and uh, functions so crews are having to go deep into the ground to uh, make that foundation for those future lanes and there's a phase two of this uh, Montana project so uh, in late 2025, we're expected to let the second phase of Montana that'll continue the, the work uh, beyond the other side of Loop 375. 
great to see all that expansion happening. You know, Andy, when I was little, this was actually Central El Paso, the airway area. Right. So really expanding toward the east now. 100%. It's good to see that the project, again, coming along as expected. Yes. Always good when it comes to that stuff. All right. Well, stay with us. Robert has another check of your weather. We'll be right back. Learn how to beat the heat and higher bills at epelectric.com. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist. Be honest with me, Bobby, right now. You ever had a more refreshing Shirley Temple in your entire life? Oh, no. No, this is delicious. It is awfully good, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's why I like rat. I love it. Let's talk about the Charlie Clark Automotive Group and how much they love El Paso to sponsor all of these small-town spotlights. You know, Charlie has always been about the experience more than just the car. You can go anywhere and get a car. But to, we want the Charlie Clark experience to resonate with the community. That's why we go out there. That's why we do these. Well, it's unfortunate, Bobby, that Charlie sent you today because I don't I don't know if you've noticed there's a professional dance floor behind us. Oh, man. And uh, I'm pretty famous for busting a mover, too. I understand. I understand. Now let's prognosticate. Here comes your forecast. Let's fire up that misery meter. High temperatures today went into the triple digits, so that's 65 days so far this year. And unfortunately, we are going to get worse as the week goes on. Here's your exclusive nine hour forecast for tomorrow. Expect a high temperature up to about 105 degrees. Expect hot south breezes at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here are the high temperatures so far today. 104 Juarez, 99.
99 Deming, 99 Alamogordo, 100 Las Cruces and El Paso International Airport, 103 so far. Those are not official high temperatures so far today. A look at the satellite radar composite. Clear as a bell with high pressure, the dominant feature of our weather pattern, and the high pressure zone grows over the next few days, so hotter days ahead. Winds right now at about 3 miles per hour. Expect them light and variable through the night tonight. Here comes your allergy forecast for Thursday 10 and then it jumps up to 11.3 on Friday. Here are your high temperatures for tomorrow. 105 Juarez, 103 Van Horn, 102 for Deming, 99 for Truth or Consequences. Tonight for you, Las Cruces, 67 the low temperature with clear skies, light winds, 102 the high temperature for tomorrow with southerly breezes. 73 low temperature at the International Airport tonight. Our high tomorrow, 105 degrees south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. Partly cloudy skies ahead for the end of the week. 105 also on Friday, 104 Saturday. That ridge of high pressure slowly starts to break down. 102 Sunday, 97 on Monday, and then a cold front comes in on Tuesday. Scattered thunder showers in 87. Cloudy with showers in 86 on Wednesday. I'm your boogeyman, boogeyman. Turn me on. I'm a boogeyman, boogeyman. Do what you want. I'm your boogeyman, boogeyman. Turn me on. I'm your boogeyman, boogeyman. Do what you want. Oh well, that was pretty good, Bobby. That was I good. Mean, I, oh, 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 oh! I love oh, it. No. Oh, I love it. Oh, I, oh, oh! He was kung fu fighting. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Bobby and, and and Bud and I'll be back with more dancing. You stay with KTSF Nine News. <laughs>
It's still very early in the Liga MX season, but FC Juarez is off to its best start since getting brought up to the first division in 2019, sitting in third place through seven matches. Today, Los Bravos added to the team in a big way. The club announced this afternoon that Luis Rodriguez would tell, will take over as the club's new president, a native of El Paso and Juarez. His most recent job was as FIFA's head of partnership development. He also has over two decades of experience for working with other large soccer federations around the globe, including UEFA, with FC Juarez currently sitting in third place, like I said, early in the Liga Mecki season. Rodriguez understands the fantastic opportunity he now has to help grow the club on both sides of the border. The mission is we've got a unique opportunity. We're a club that is truly on the border, right, with a unique fan base. You know, the whole, you know, the whole attraction of having Mexican-Americans play at FC Juarez or that be an outlet to reach professional development on the football side. And now what we're trying to do off the field is something that we're aspiring for every young professional who one is passionate about soccer and is passionate about you know, social mobility and economic development. Mountain Star Sports Group also announced today that it has become the majority owner of FC Juarez. The group also owns the El Paso Chihuahuas and El Paso Locomotive FC. Juarez's next game is September 16th at Nicaxa. On the gridiron, UTEP continues to be a one and a half point favorite over Big Ten opponent Northwestern ahead of Saturday's clash in the Windy City. As we told you yesterday, this is the first time ever that UTEP has ever been favored against a Power Five opponent. They haven't beaten a Power Five squad since Ole Miss in the 1967 Sun Bowl. They're four and 14 the last three years on the road as well. So the DAC is still stacked against them a bit. However, this is a minor team with tons of confidence after last week's win over Incarnate Word. As we said before the season, this is the year UTEP has been waiting the entire Dana Dimmel era for six seasons. A big win on the road against a Big Ten team might announce the Miners' arrival despite that week zero loss at Jacksonville State. It's time, man. I think it matters to these guys. Um, a lot of experience. I think our guys go into every game knowing that we have a chance to win. So there's a different kind of energy right now. I know we started off slow week zero, but there's a lot of guys that are capable, but fewer are willing, and our guys are willing. Um, so what you saw Saturday, I think you're going to see each week moving forward. UTEP certainly thinks it's got the squad to pull the upset. The Miners are at Northwestern Saturday at 1.30 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Meanwhile, at New Mexico State, the Aggies also picked up their first win of the season over the weekend at home versus an FCS opponent. Things get immediately tougher this Saturday, though, as the Aggies play their first Conference USA game on the road at Liberty. Now, NMSU's defense has been a bit of a work in progress the first couple of weeks, allowing 389 yards to UMass in Week 0, then 280 to Western Illinois last Saturday. They'll probably face the toughest offense they've faced this season thus far against Liberty. The Flames run the triple option with a twist. They do it out of the shotgun spread. It's certainly unique especially for an Aggies defense, still getting many new players up to speed. Triple option, it, it, uh, it, it keeps everyone accountable. You have to do your job and you have to have trust in your teammates to do their job. So it's good that we have this game early on because it's going to get us better um, for all the other games as far as relying on each other and understanding where our piece of the puzzle fits. They have a few changes. They have a few dynamic players on offense. They have a, a good quarterback who can run and beat you with his feet. If we do our keys, it's, no, it's um, unlike any other thing we've ever seen. NMSU and Liberty kick things off Saturday, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, as the Aggies look to beat the Flames on the road for a second year in a row. And finally on the diamond, some day baseball for the El Paso Chihuahuas in game two of their six-game road series, or excuse me, home series versus the, uh, Round Rock. The Dogs emerged victorious 8-6 for their second straight win at Southwest University Park. Jerkson Profar drilled a three-run home run in the sixth that proved to be the difference. Same two teams will do it tomorrow at 635 at Southwest University Park. So the Chihuahuas get the win, and I will send it back over to Andy and Natasha. Guys, I hope you're eating that pizza and playing some of the games behind you. I was going to say, Colin, we have a whole pizza. We have wings and, and nachos with your back. name on it. So if you want to come down, we're oh. here at Rad Retro. Bring Cade it on over to Daddy. Arcade here in East El Paso. <laughs> yes. We'll get it to go, Box. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. Have we, ever, have we ever let you down, Colin? <laughs> Seriously. And, you know, we're going to have so much more for you in our next half hour. So stay with us. I've been over